In today's video, how to build muscle in a caloric deficit. Hey guys, what's going on? This is Paul Rebella from ProPhysique.com and today I got my man Brett Contreras here. Dr. Brett Contreras, the glute guy, and uh, coming out with your first book. It's pretty exciting. Actually, my third book. It's your third book. My first in a long time, yeah. Oh, wow, I screwed that up, but we're going to keep it going because it's his <laughs> first book that I know of. So let's talk a little bit about that book. What is it? It's uh, called The Glute Lab. That's the same name as my gym, and it's all about glutes, and it comes out September 17th. You can pre-order it right now on Amazon, but yeah. it's, uh, we spent a year and a half on it. Uh, Glenn Cordoza helped me write it. He's the same guy who wrote, uh, co-wrote Supple Leopard with Kelly Starrett, which is a really good book. Yep. And I wanted him because he goes really into detail with the, like the methods and the techniques and they don't skimp on, you know, a lot of these book companies, they don't, they're like, we can only do this many exercises. Sure. Victory Belt let me go all out. And here's what's crazy. You sometimes hear people in our industry be like, once you buy a book, it's two years outdated because it takes so long to publish sure. it. Uh, we're still finalizing, like it hasn't printed yet, we're still finalizing it, but I've snuck in research from from July awesome. into the book, awesome. and so it's September, it'll be two months outdated, so it's like pretty much current. So that's kind of the advantage of being friends with Brett, like you, you're, you're privy to all this uh, research that's really relative to what we're doing, and I think today's topic is, you know, I love to talk about trending topics, and so I asked you guys for some questions, and the... the one of the prevailing thing that's going around right now is the idea of building muscle while you're in a caloric deficit because the 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 common school of thought is like you can only add muscle while you're eating in a surplus and you can only lose fat while you're in a caloric deficit so this idea of recomposition is very kind of black and white so i think we know very few things are actually black and white so why don't you give us your thoughts on how and if it's possible to build muscle while in either maintenance or a caloric deficit Okay, so if you talk to most people in the industry, they'll say, well, you can build muscle e either in a deficit or under maintenance under three conditions or in three scenarios. And most of the experts that you talk to, uh, like if we ask most of our friends, is this possible? And they say, yes, it's possible. Number one, if you're a beginner, you got newbie For sure. gains. For sure. You've never reaped any of the gains of lifting and proper eating and you can see a lot of gains that way. So that's obvious. Beginners can recomp like crazy. Sure. And that's typically, you know, when I get a client, uh, a lot of times I'll, I'll get, say, like I don't train a ton of obese people sure. or like extreme fat loss subjects. I usually get people who find me who are already fairly fit. At least or they, they're immediate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But they typically, you know, a lot of times they come to me and they're like, you know, say they're, you know, five foot five, and weigh 130 pounds and you know maybe they're eating 1600 calories a day or something like that i will actually keep them there you know and, and some people will be like Ooh, the, she should be eating 2200 but whatever <laughs> say they're eating 1600 calories i just say and then i'll say describe to me your typical day sure and then and they don't track they just like i, I ask them what they eat and I'll, I'll do the math and it's usually around say 1600 so i'm just giving a hypothetical i'll just say and then I'll say, how much protein do you eat? And then they'll describe it to me. I'm like, okay, 30, 40, you know, I'll be like, okay, they're getting around like 90 grams a day. Right. All right. That's fine. You know, 90 to 100, if you weigh around 130, that's fine. Right. So I go, okay, just keep eating that way. Don't change it. I don't give them macros. I don't want to complicate things. If you're already eating well, right. don't complicate it. Just get them stronger. They train with me for a whole year. The end of the year comes around and they'll like try on their old pants or they'll find a new picture. I remember one of my clients, she stayed 130 the whole year, but she got so strong and she tried on her old pants and there was like a, like a four inch gap in the waist sure. because it fit her totally different. So what happens is you recomp, uh, meaning you gain the same amount of muscle as, as you, and, and you gain a certain amount of muscle and you lose that same amount of fat roughly and your body looks different. We call it re recomposition. Your body looks different. You're changing your body composition, improving it. Now, they'll also tell you that, yes, that can happen if you're returning from a layoff. 
You sure. know, if you took the time to build the muscle and then you stop working out, you know, it's called muscle memory. There's a couple scientific explanations with it, with epigenetics and also with the additional myonuclei. I, I did a really good video on this because an article in Mass with Eric Helms and Dr. Zoros yep. and, and Greg Knuckles, they actually talked about muscle memory and how the genetics of it works. So if you're interested in that, look up my name and muscle memory and that'll come up. Yeah, so there's the epigenetic aspect too, and there's also the fact that you increase your nuclei yeah. and those stay. So it's basically easier to get back to your yes. ending point than it was to get there initially. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's way easier. And you know that if you've ever taken, you know, yeah. take a few months off and you can quickly Comes get to right back. Yeah. yeah. So they'll say uh, newbie gains as a beginner after layoff. The third is obvious if you say you've been working out for five years and you kind of plateau and then you start using anabolic steroids. Okay. Obviously you're going to reach, you're going to have gains even if you're in a deficit or, sure. or at maintenance. Okay. So those are the three most people say. They, are, they, they talk about that all the time, but I want to talk about two, two additional um, aspects or scenarios that no one ever talks about. Perfect. All right. The, so the fourth scenario, that's just if you never followed a good program or the best okay, program. Okay, that's what I was going to ask you. Yeah. If you've never pr tried the best program for your body or you see so many lifters, they've never even engaged in a true progressive overload plan. Sure. That's why they, you know, I get people all the time. You know, in the research, it's just like this person's a trained individual if they've trained for one full year or maybe it's three full years. I get people all the time who have trained for several years and they think they've done everything right. <laughs> you know, they'll say, I do squats, I do this, I, you know, I, you know, and, and they think they've done everything right, but they've never, and then you get trained by someone like you or me who knows what we're doing. Right. Like, you know, I'm a strength coach. I can get people strong and I, I, I know the right judgment calls to make. Like, let's load it up heavier. Let's back off. Let's have you do this today. Yeah. They train with me and they see huge results. And then also I can tell you myself that I don't follow the same plan as everyone else. Like I, I need, I have different needs. So do you, we, right. we, have, we don't train the same way, even though we're similar height and like body stature, but we, we still train differently. Everyone needs to figure out their optimal plan with right. frequency, volume, exercise selection, all these things. And I can tell you that's, there's a lot of research behind that with muscle damage. Like some people, ex you can expose them to the same workout. Some people get way more muscle damage than other people. Sure. There's also like a recovery gene. And so yeah. I've got some clients who can handle like these crazy amounts of volume and others who cannot, and you have to tailor it to you. Okay? Yeah, I think that's something you really learn through experience. You have time. to. It's funny because let's say you just do the same program, the same exercise year after year after year. Well, it's like that. Say, they say you can work the same, like work the same job, like work. What is this? I don't even know the saying. I'm going to butcher it. But anyway, it's like you can work. Say you try new things. You can work for 15 years and get 15 years of experience, or you can do, do the same thing every yeah, year and yeah, have one year. one year of experience repeated yeah. 15 times or yeah. something like that. I just butchered it. But anyway, you have to always be experimenting. Yeah. Like I know I can speak for myself. I've tried you know, all types of systems, all, all the, you know, the bodybuilding systems, all the different body parts, splits. Yeah. I've tried hit training, one set to failure. I've tried low frequency, high frequency. I've tried, I've tried full body training, all the different types of body parts, splits, push, pull, upper, lower splits, uh, like powerlifting routines where you do like a squat day, a bench day, a deadlift day, and a, and a hypertrophy day. I've tried like, like Shiko, Russian squat program, small off. the the small out, the 20, uh, 20 rep squat program. I've tried so many different systems over the years. German and, volume is another real common. Yeah, German volume training. Um, and so I've honed in on what works well for me right. and it changes, it changes over the years. So you gotta be experimenting, okay? And, and honing in on the best program for you. And then the last, oh, and by the way, before I go into the last one, you see this all the time in the research. You know, like my friend Brad Schoenfeld and I, um, we see this in the training studies that we do. We have trained individuals and we push them really hard. You know, they crush it though. You know, we'll, we'll have them do squats so and leg press. it's pretty common, a trained individual, when monitored, will when train monitor, harder. Yeah. yeah. Like when you, and, and it's funny, a lot of them will be like, wow, I have never trained like this before. Because you'll have set parameters. You're like, yeah. two minute rest periods. 
you're going to failure on three sets or whatever. Yeah. And once you reach, you know, once you go up in weight, we you know, once you get complete all the reps, we go up five pounds or something right. like that. And it's very systematic. And it's for, you know, it might be 10 weeks and they crush it. And then you'll see via not just like girth measurements, you see when, when you use actual sports science tools like ultrasound, yeah. MRI, things like that, they actually grew muscle actual even though measurements. they were trained. Yeah. So all, according to all the experts, they shouldn't gain muscle, but they went on a really good program and they were pushed. Okay, so that's the fourth reason. And the okay. fifth reason I want to talk about is motivation. And it, this is something no one ever talks about. Wow, I like it. No one ever talks about how motivated you are, okay? When you are motivated, this is why I love training bikini competitors when they're when they've got a show. Oh yeah. When they have a show, or, or when when a when someone someone when a woman has a wedding coming up. Yep. Shredding for the wedding. Yeah. Shredding for the wedding. <laughs> you, you, they will be. They're your soldiers. They will push so hard. Anybody and they that's do. got a deadline. Yeah. But they both have a date. Yep. Yeah. There's this date in mind, and so I can speak for myself. When I turned forty, um, Paul and I are both the same 40 age. Plus. Forty-three. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Actually, I turned 43 in two days. Happy anyway, birthday. Uh, when this yeah. video is out, happy birthday. Yeah, so, um, but, Make sure uh, you go wish him happy birthday. It's his birthday. So, yeah, when you're 43, no one cares anymore. But uh, yeah, that's a, that's when I turned 40, I wanted to look my best. And so I, I think I started, like, my birthday is July 26. I started right around the turn of the new year. Yeah. So it was like seven plus months right. of just crushing it. And I... Some of these PRs I haven't beat since then, and I weighed like 20, you know, yeah, like, yeah, 17 pounds less than I do right. now. And I, I mean, I crushed it on every lift during those seven months. I mean, I can't tell you how much, I mean, so I, you're at your peak at 40. At my squats, my deadlifts, my hip thrusts, my uh, bench press, my military press, my chin ups, my, uh, yeah, my, I've, I've beat the bench press and the deadlift and the squats since then but yeah I saw so much growth but I weighed 238 and I thought okay come come 40 I'll probably weigh like 225 yeah. and I'll cut down I never even cut down I just kept getting stronger and stronger and I was hungrier and hungrier and I got I was eating so much food but my workouts were so amazing but here's the yeah. deal my workouts came first sure. like right now I'm so busy you are too Paul yeah. like we're so busy right now it's like our workout today, we, we went to my gym, we squeezed in a yep. quick, I mean, you had a good workout, but it wasn't like this, like, you know, when you're motivated, you make sure you sleep well, yeah. you make sure you're well fed going you're into that workout, you're the whole day around tomorrow's workout, your whole week, yeah. uh, your, sleep, your whole week, yeah. everything, you're like, next week, I got to do this, and yeah. you're so motivated, you, you prioritize the workout, and, you know, you're, it's hard to fail when you're that so, motivated. I don't know, you've worked with a lot of competitors in your gym, so there's this phenomenon that I notice. So when I enter contest prep, I'm starting my phase of like dieting down for the show. The first six or eight weeks, I notice a remarkable change in my physique. And, you know, my diet becomes better, my meal timing, I'm actually taking all my supplements. My workouts have that intensity because now I'm focused on the stage. Sure, I should probably be training that high quality all my life, but it's hard, right? No, that's but not once real, you set that real yeah, goal, yeah. so that it just it's like a magical period of time where like yeah. the fat's coming off, but you you swear you're gaining muscle, yeah. and it's all because you're putting every ounce of focus into that goal. But that's the whole point. You can't like you just mentioned. Yeah, I know. That's not realistic. You're gonna have periods in your life yeah. where. Yeah, you're so busy or... Like, we're I mean, consistent, yeah. but our intensity... We work crazy. out, you know, four oh, yeah. or five days a week, every week, yeah. you and I do. We have for many, many, many years. Yeah, that won't change. Since we were 15. Yeah. <laughs> and that won't change. But there are times where you're more focused on your... I always say this. That's I can, why I love competing. It, it, it forces like, you to... Yeah, yeah, it just focuses me. I always say I can focus on my physique and strength. I can focus on self-improvement, like being a better human yeah. <laughs> in whatever way. And then, or focus on my business, but not all three. Not all three. Usually just one at a time. So everyone talks about this mythical thing called balance, but I, I like to think of it as harmony. Sometimes yeah, things yeah. are going to be out of balance. As long as you're in harmony, you're good. Yeah, exactly. And so you kind of save those times up like, all right, when you have, a, you know, some, a wedding, a competition, or even just, I know I'm going to have, you know, my family's going on vacation and we're going to the beach and I'm going to have to wear a swimsuit. Yeah. 
I need to look good. Whenever I have a client struggling to lose weight or do so, I say, what's your reason? Because if your reason doesn't outweigh your reason to go out and have a drink with your friends, mm -hmm. then you're, you're going to lose every time. Yeah, right. So yes, you can actually put on muscle being in a maintenance or a caloric deficit phase, but all these things have to be in place. You have to be training harder, putting more effort into your training, actually training properly, whatever type of training program that means for you. If you're training once a week, maybe now you're hitting a body part twice a week. You have to be eating, sleeping, resting as well to ensure that those workouts are high quality. Yep. And if you're a new trainee or if you're someone that's just getting back into training or you're taking some anabolic steroids, of course, those are like bonuses. Yeah. So anything else you want to add? No, nope, that's all. But thanks for having me on. Dude, it was a great well, question. we're in Brett's house in his gym downstairs. So thank you for having me. Uh, I always love hanging out with you, man. My pleasure. Time, so My pleasure. We're going to get a workout in the glute lab tomorrow morning and then we're off to USA's. Brett's just going to stay here and work. That's all he ever does. <laughs> thanks, guys. Thank you.